Welcome everybody to part six of your Game Maker Beginner to Pro series. In these videos, we've been learning the fundamentals of Game Maker and GML. Uh, in the last video, we gave our player a gun here, and of course, we made it to where the players, or I'm sorry, the enemies will die when they get hit by a bullet. But we want to slow this gun way down. We don't want this to be happening. So to do this, we're going to be learning something new, which we've already have done this for our object player before, but we're going to do it again, and we're going to learn about if statements. So buckle up. You want to know this because you're going to use if statements a lot. They are in about every programming language that exists, and GameMaker is no exception. So we want to slow those bullets down, and we want to control how fast we are able to shoot. And to do that, in our create event, we're going to create a new variable called can under slash shoot, and we're going to give it the value of true. Uh, this is called a Boolean variable. It's still an instance variable, but this is a Boolean, so you can be true or you can be false, and that's it, okay? True or false, um, and we're gonna say true. And we're basically gonna say if this variable is true, then we're allowed to shoot a bullet. And uh, so from there, we're gonna go to our global left down, um, which is where we're creating our object bullet. Again, this is all an object player. And we're gonna create a if statement, okay? And we're gonna say if, can under slash shoot equals true. Now we're gonna put uh, curly braces. We're gonna put one here, and then we're going to put another one. Oop, I shouldn't have did that. We're gonna put another one after this uh, function here of instance create depth. And then we're gonna put our, our, uh, our thing here. We're gonna click here before instance. Yeah, I, I'm very eloquent, aren't I? We're just gonna indent that, Good, goodness. <laughs> so uh, use the tab button and indent this. This is an if statement, okay? Now this code would have worked without indenting it, but it's just good practice to indent your code when it's between curly brackets, okay? This is an if statement. Uh, and uh, of course, GameMaker is very um, forgiving. It's very versatile. If you come from another programming language, you can do stuff like this. Uh, that works, but this works too. If this variable can shoot does equal true, it's going to run everything we put within these curly braces. If it's outside of it, it's not going to run it. If it's inside of it, it's going to run this code. So we're going to say if can true can shoot equals true, create our bullet, okay? And then we're going to say can under slash shoot equals false. So we're setting this variable to false so we can only shoot one time but not again. So if we run the code, only one bullet's going to come out. One bullet. And now we can't shoot again because we have to set a timer or what we call an alarm to uh, reset this variable to true. And then we can decide how long the player has to wait. So you're gonna add another event and you're gonna say alarm and you can choose from 12 alarms going from zero to 11. By the way, in programming uh, talk or language or logic, uh, numbers always start with zero, not one, just so you know. So do alarm zero, and um, uh, we're just going to, I'm just gonna delete all the green text, but all we're gonna put in here is can under slash shoot equals true. So with this alarm, we're gonna make it to where this variable resets so the player can shoot again. Go back to your global left down, and after can shoot equals false, you're just going to do this, alarm, and then in these uh, square brackets, you're going to say zero. So whatever alarm uh, that you ever want to set, you put the number here. If it's alarm five, you put five, but we have alarm zero. And you're going to say equal to, and then you're going to put in a number. We're just going to put, I think by default, 30 would equal one second, okay? So because this is the steps. I forgot where Game Maker now starts you at, if it's 60, but let's try 30. And again, you ended in a semicolon. You don't have to. It's good practice to. You don't end if statements like this in a semicolon. That's that's wrong. And GameMaker will warn you when you're doing something that's misplaced, like this. See those yellow curly brackets or, or whatever under under the semicolon? Yeah, it's telling me don't do that. Okay. Um, but it, it's when when you're done with a line of code like this, like a function like this, um, the semicolons are appropriate. So you don't put one here. Uh, I, actually, that actually might work. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm self-taught, and I was homeschooled. What do I know? Okay, now it's <laughs> it's going to work now. So see that? Every one second, we're shooting a bullet. And uh, that slows things way down. So this would allow you to do different types of guns or allow players to get an upgrade that makes that alarm faster so they shoot faster. Uh, but we can uh, make this, if we want it to go faster, let's set it to something like 10. So every 10 frames, we're going to shoot a bullet. So look at that. Much better. So, of course, we can, and um, we'll probably do that in the next video, we'll add a sound effect. So it actually sounds like we're shooting a gun. But that's it. This is an if statement. And uh, isn't that great? And it's the same thing we did in the step event, that if our hit points equals or is less than zero, we destroy the player. If statements are the bomb. So um, I forgot the other thing I wanted to do in this video, but let's just do this too. Let's go to our object enemy before we quit, and let's create a create event in our object enemy. And we're going to create a variable called hit points. Let's give it the value of 100. And what we're going to do is, so notice it's, it's named the same as player, but remember it's an instance variable. So these are going to work in two different ways. The hit points of player and the hit points an enemy will work differently. So enemy now has hit points. Now an object bullet, let's delete this because we don't want them to just die immediately. And let's say um, if we collide with a bullet, we're going to say hit points, which is our variable, minus equals, uh, let's say 40, you know, or 50. So they got to be hit twice to die. Uh, let's do 25. It has to be hit four times to die. And, uh, of course, this in itself is not going to do anything because I think you already know what you need, what needs to happen. But look at that. See the, how those bullets destroy when they hit the enemy? That's what we did last time. That, that's the collision. Okay, uh, we're going to create a step event for our object enemy, and we're going to say if hit points uh, is less than or equal to, is that right? Yeah. Less than, oh, sorry, brain fart. Le less than or equal to zero, curly braces, instance destroy, just like that. And now it's going to destroy after several hits. Check that out. So again, you could add a sound effect here in the collision for object bullet to where he's getting hit. You know, you can add one for the left um, mouse down. Uh, in this if statement, you could put a sound effect for when it shoots. Every time it shoots, it's playing a sound effect. And that, and that will, stuff like that brings the game to life. And, and hopefully you're seeing how flat this feels. Yeah, because you got to add juice to the game. You know, you want to, and we'll do that in future videos, where you shoot and the screen starts to shake, and when you hit the enemy, blood splatters, and, and that kind of stuff makes games feel alive. But this is under the hood, you know, of a shooting game. So, uh, anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I uh, also just want to let you know I, have, I do have a Patreon, and I don't push this very much. And uh, if, if you'd like to support me on Patreon with these videos, then it's just patreon.com slash wizardy, and I put the link in the description. I have had people ask, and it's very appreciative, uh, or I'm very appreciative for the people who are supporting, um, which I, I don't know if anyone is now, because I haven't posted in so long. I'm just now coming back to YouTube, but I want to thank you in advance for those of you who do support. Uh, all of the, the money that I get from this just kind of goes back into Game Maker. It goes into my projects. It goes into my games. Uh, there are things that I have to buy, sound effects, and I hire people to do graphics and all that stuff. And, you know, as a way of saying thank you, I do have some perks. I might overhaul these because I wrote these a long time ago. But one thing I am going to get going very soon for the ones who do support $20 a month, which is super generous, um, I, I want to give them these people access to a Google Drive that has all my Game Maker Marketplace content in one place for free, well, you know, for the supporters, so you don't have to buy the stuff I release on there, and you just have complete access to it. And I also want to add this group of people. Uh, I want to add uh, NPCs with the names of the people who support uh, th this group in my future games. And, uh, of course, you're going to be in the credits. And uh, actually, the, the $10 get, I guess, yeah, I wrote this so long ago. 
But the ten dollar a month would would also be the game maker marketplace content in a Google Drive. And uh, anyway, so I just want to let you know that that's there, and I want to thank you in advance for supporting me there. I'm also on X X dot com slash Wizardy. Um, which, uh, now you got to be logged in to see it, but. Follow me on there, uh, and, and I, I want to encourage you, if you're getting into game design and game dev, get on X, or what used to be Twitter, because there is a really good community on there, and it's a lot of fun to engage that community, support other people's projects, get support for your own. That's all I got to say. I'll see you in part seven. Bye-bye.